everybody, and today we get to start our fun unit on stoichiometry. I know you've all heard the name from people who've taken chemistry already and you've been scared about it. It's nothing to be scared about. It's a lot of fun. If you like puzzles, which you know that I do, um, it's a lot of fun. Um, so when we say the word stoichiometry, what we're talking about is using balance equations, and you guys know how to balance equations, um, to calculate quantities needed for a chemical reaction. Um, so this can, we can kind of relate this to baking cookies, right? How, what quantities do we need to bake cookies? Okay, so if I have my ingredients here for baking sugar cookies, and I know that these ingredients will produce four dozen cookies, I want to make a total of six dozen cookies. How many cups of flour will I need? So there's one way that you guys know how to do this. You've probably learned in math, and that is in the bottom left, all right? And what do we call this? Cross multiplication. So you know that you can set up two ratios. If I have three cups of flour that makes four dozen cookies, to get six dozen cookies, I need X cups of flour. And all you do is you cross multiply, rewrite your equation and isolate X. So you've seen that in math. What you've seen in chemistry now and what we're gonna be using is stoichiometry to do the same problem dimensional analysis to do the same problem for stoichiometry. So if we're starting with six dozen cookies, or we know we want six dozen cookies, That's and up good. here, I know that it makes four dozen, so I'm going to put dozen on the bottom, makes four dozen cookies, and I need to relate this to our cups of flour. So cups of flour are going to go on the top. How many cups of flour make four dozen cookies? Over there, three cups of flour. And what unit will cross off? Dozen is gone, right? Dozen is on top and on bottom, so it will cross off. Six times three, 18, divided by four, gives you 4.5 cups of flour needed, right? So this is how we're using dimensional analysis to calculate the quantities needed for a chemical reaction, right? Now, before we can actually do all of these calculations, we need to be able to interpret our equations. So... Next time, we are going to be actually predicting and figuring out how many quantities of uh, reactants or products that we are going to be needing or producing. But first, like uh, Ms. Frankvig said, we're going to just interpret the balanced equations, baby steps. So our first example is magnesium metal reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce uh, hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride. So the first thing, the first way that we are going to interpret these balanced equations is we are going to draw our particle pictures, essentially. So I am going to, or actually before that though, we need to make sure that our equation is balanced. Sometimes they will be balanced, sometimes they won't. I have one magnesium on each side. I have one hydrogen in my reactants. I have two in my products. So I'm going to go ahead and put a two right here. And then I end up with two chlorides on each side. So I am balanced. Great. So my particle pictures, what I'm going to do is we're just going to literally draw a circle and then write whatever we are representing inside of that. We're going to do the total number based on what our coefficients give us. So one, two, one, and one. So my magnesium, this one's basically this mg. Our hydrochloric acid. Now remember, hydrochloric acid is an acid, and so we it's going to break apart um, during this process. And, well, it's already broken apart. It's dissolved in water right now as it's aqueous, and it's going to um, rearrange itself and form different two different products. So I have two HCLs. So I'm going to draw it like this, right? This is my chloride, and this is my hydrogen. And remember, because these are aqueous, I'm going to show, I'm just going to draw a little line right here, that those are dissolved in water. Can you guys see that? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. And then, yields so hydrogen gas. Yeah, what's happening because these are breaking, the hydrogen is going to find each other, right? They're going to bond. And we have H2. These are touching, that means that they're bonded. And we have MgCl2. So we have one Mg, and we have, draw Mickey ears, 
MgCl2, right? So you this by itself, two separate. These are not drawn together because I have two whole moles technically, but two separate formula units of my hydrochloric acid. This together because I have one molecule of hydrogen gas. So that's kind of where we're at. The next thing we do is we interpret that into our representative particles. So my first is mag uh, magnesium metal. So I have one. Remember that our representative particles are atoms, formula units, and molecules. So that's what we're using here. So I have one mole. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> I have one atom. One atom, I'm getting ahead of myself. One atom of magnesium. One atom of magnesium, okay, plus two, mo two formula units, <laughs> two formula units of HCl, two FU, remember that's how we abbreviate formula units, HCl, hydrochloric acid, yields, right, we have H2, Remember that two nonmetals bonded together, even if it's the same atom, is going to be a molecule. So we have one molecule of H2. Oh, I totally just forgot to put that there. And I did too. Um, and we have MgCl2, right? We have one of this with a metal bonded to nonmetals, because this is this is one formula unit. Of MgCl2, right? And if we're looking at this, um, we can actually also take a look at what class of reaction we're representing here. If we have one atom and a formula unit breaking down into, well, rearranging themselves, right? Our Mg picking off our H, and our H picking off by itself. This is a single replacement reaction. Oh, I ran out of room. Single <laughs> replacement really reaction. Replacement. Okay, um, so our next step of interpreting our balanced equations is actually using looking at uh, the moles of each of each one. <laughs> so um, first, we end up with remember our coefficients are just going to tell us how many moles of something we have. Because if we were actually talking about one atom of magnesium, we don't have the capability of a doing a reaction that's like isolating a reaction that is just one atom and one formula unit. So that's why we have the mole. We're gonna, that's how we quantify and measure things in chemistry because it's a more reasonable amount. Um, so we end up with one mole of one, you just do the same color. One mole of magnesium plus two moles of hydrochloric acid yields. Right, so notice we're just using the same coefficients. So how many H2s? I have one mole of H2. And how many moles of MgCl2? Just one. One mole of MgCl2. All right, so that's it. The coefficients are telling us the representative particles and the number of moles here. So we can take this one step further and we're going to add into that moles that we just did some masses. Here's where I was wanting to use different colors. <laughs> okay. So for our masses, uh, all we have to do is we end up plugging in our molar mass and our moles are going to cancel out. So let me show you how this works. If I have one mole, If I have one mole of magnesium, all I do is I say one mole of magnesium, and then I plug in my molar mass of magnesium, which is, according to the back of the periodic table, 24.31, 24.31 grams per mole, okay? So my moles end up actually canceling out. Now, do you want them to actually write Mg, or are we leaving that up for the whole thing? Okay, 
So my moles are going to cancel out, and then I have my grams of magnesium. So we will go ahead and continue writing this. Plus, I have two whole moles, remember, of my hydrochloric acid, which is 72, two moles. Actually, yeah, like two moles. I'm just writing this out. Okay. Two moles HCl. Two moles of HCl, the dogs are in the way, uh, is going to yield equal 72.92 grams per mole. Remember, molar mass, periodic table. 36.46. What? 36.46, molar mass of Oh, 36, sorry, I got ahead of myself. 36.46 grams per mole. And again, my moles are going to cancel out. This yields, sorry, it did not want to be on the camera. So I have one mole of H2, and my molar mass of H2 from the periodic table is 2.02 .02 grams per mole. And I'm going to go down here a little bit. I have one mole of MgCl2, and my molar mass of MgCl2 from the periodic table is 95.21 grams per mole, right? And just like in the reactants, the moles cancel out. And we're just going to be left with grams. Now, I'm going to go ahead. We Now, you, we do have to multiply through, right? So my one mole of, 20, of uh, magnesium is still going to be equal to 24.31 grams plus 2 times 36. That's where the uh, 72.92 grams comes from, which should yield, we have 1 times 2.02, .02, so that is 2.02 .02 grams, and 1 times 95.21 is just 95.21 grams. So now you're going to see that if we add our reactants and we add our products together, we will get the same, um, the same number of grams on each side, which is what we want, right? We're demonstrating and can, uh, we're following the law of conservation of mass, which is why we balanced our equation in the first place. So our end result is going to be 97.23 grams yields. Also over here, 95.21 plus 2.02 .02 is 97.23 grams. If those don't equal each other, you've done something wrong. Perhaps you forgot to go ahead and multiply yeah. through. That's usually yeah. the error that we have. Or we didn't balance correctly in the first place. So the whole point of this exercise is to follow and demonstrate that we are uh, the law of conservation of mass because um, that is a very important part of stoichiometry. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed. And that's how we're going to we're going to use this to end up calculating how many what we need of an amount of reactant or how much product we will be producing. That's it. Thank you for watching.